Hi friends, it's Sarah from ruffles.rainboots.com. We are going to work with laser safe heat transfer vinyl, two different colors of acrylic, and a heat press to create this quick and easy little Valentine's craft with our laser. I am so excited. I hope you enjoy this project. So to get started, I'm using these Dollar Tree treat bags. They're burlap. There's two to a set. They also have smaller ones that have a few more to a set. I'm going to be using some Glowforge iron-on vinyl. This is laser safe, heat transfer vinyl. Caesar also has some. That's great. I'm going to be using the X-Tool S140 to cut this, and I'm going to be using some acrylic. My favorite is Houston Acrylic Matte Apple Red and Bright Pastel Bubblegum. Uh, I will put links to these below. You can use a heat press mat and any kind of heat source. I'm going to be using my 9x9 Cricut Heat Press, but you can use a little one or an iron. We're going to be working on the back because the front is already cute. So I'm going to measure the back here. Now, don't worry. If you have an X tool, I'm going to give you the file. But if you're new to heat transfer vinyl, there's two sides, very different. One is shiny and one is dull. Don't take them apart. We need both. We're going to cut it shiny side down, which is why we have to mirror our design for HTV. As I mentioned, the XCS file is below, but if you're making your own 6.125 and 0.35 of my measurements for the lines, then I'm just going to move that to a different layer so I can create my sizing here for these spaces. So I'm going to create an X and a heart. I'm going to go over here to the shapes, pull in the heart, and just size it down to whatever I think looks good. If you have a Cricut machine, you can do all of this with chipboard and you can like press uh, heat transfer vinyl to it. Or if you want to cut balsa wood, you can if you have the Maker or the Maker 3. So as you can see, I'm just tr trying to get an idea. I'm changing everything to cut. This guy is ignore because we don't need it. We are going to just create an X here in whatever thick style font. I'm using Victoria. And then we're going to size it to be similar in height to our heart. So you can see it's 1.249. I don't like three digits. So we're going 1.25 for both of those for the height. That's it. You're almost done. So now we just need to duplicate that, remove this little rectangle, and make five of each of these. And you can copy and paste them until your heart desires. I'm just going to get these out of the way, horizontally distribute them. I end up messing with this to not use as much acrylic. For those of you wanting to know how we do that, we're going to just vertically flip a couple of these and scooch them in. That's it. And then we're just going to distribute and align these. Isn't that cool? You're done almost. All right, so I'm going to uh, set these all to cut as well, and I'm going to move them to a different color layer because all of these are going to be cut at different times for me. So again, cut, move to a different layer, and now we have to get back to the grid because it's obviously not even. So what I'm going to do is just highlight everything. I'm going to horizontal align after I group each of these two pieces, but it's hard to see when you hit it. To engrave, however, you can really see what's off. So fix everything that's off, and then combine and unite, which will make it all one cut, and then set it back to cut. Don't forget that part. So I'm going to move that over here. We're not quite done with that. I do want to group these all together so that I can just move one thing. So let me group this one as well. That's just easy for me to do. So back to this. So working with heat transfer vinyl, here's a tip. We want to cut out what's called a weeding box. So this just means we're going to do two different cuts. We are wanting them to be horizontally and vertically aligned, so go ahead and do that. You can group them. What's going to happen is we are going to full cut the outside edge and only kiss cut the inside. Kiss cut means we only cut the vinyl and not that shiny sheet on front. So in order to do that, we're going to need to test our materials here. If you've never done a material test with the XTool XCS program, it's super easy. You create a shape of any kind, any size. You change it to whatever processing type you want. We want cut. Now you go up to array, material test array, and here's where a little bit of finagling comes in. So your test cuts on something really easy like this should be pretty low power. We want to see if, you know, 
a combination of speed and power is going to give us that beautiful kiss cut. So we don't need all the this stuff around here. So I'm going to just quickly take that all and set it to ignore this stuff in here. You can group back together. It's the only stuff we want. Each of these, when you click on them, is a different cut, power, um, and speed setting. You don't want to mess with those. Just group those back together. We're putting the shiny side down on our laser bed. And we're going to pop that into place with some pins or whatever you use to hold down some stuff. You could put a rock in there. I don't know. But what we also need to do is turn off any air assist. And I'll show you how I'm going to do that in a second. So I'm going to choose laser flat. And material obviously is going to be user defined for this. I'm going to hit this distance auto measure. What's going to happen is we've positioned our crosshairs over this material. And we have our nice little positioning tool that measures it for us. We hit rectangle and then we position our crosshair in the top leftmost portion and hit the start button to lock in the first vertex, move the crosshair bottom right, and then hit the start button on the machine again to create our processing area. We can drag all of this even though we've ignored all of the writing. And now we're going to frame it. So we want to make sure that this zero power frame actually goes around and we have enough room. Every pin is out of the way and whatnot. Then we need to go up to the air assist. I'm using automatic air assist. So I'm going to come down here and choose zero for cut. If you have a manual air assist, just don't turn it on. All right. Now we can process down here in the bottom left. This goes so fast. It's literally almost paper thin. We're going to close our machine, turn on our inline fan or open our blast gate, whatever you're using. Hit start on the software first to send the file and then start on the machine to process. I'm standing literally this close to the machine because I've never worked with this before. So I want to just see what my pieces are doing. We've got a little charring on some. Again, this is going to depend on you and your cuts. I will put my settings down below. I ran a couple more just to get an idea and I'm going to go with it. I kind of forgot to run a test on the outside edge and I'll show you what happens when you do that. So I'm just going to repeat the process. We're going to auto measure, we're going to set our marking area, frame it, and process it. You can see, see this char? You can clean that off, but I'm lazy, and I'm going to show you how I deal with it in a minute. This is the acrylic, and I'm going to just make a mark where I think that width is needing to be, and I'm going to pull off this paper masking at the same height all the way to that point. I'm going to do that on both sides of the acrylic, front and back. Now you can put your acrylic directly in your machine, but I like to put spacers underneath it. I elevate my acrylic to avoid any flashback from my honeycomb or scratches. So I just put those pieces under where I'm cutting, pin the material down, and do the same stuff we've done before. Set everything else to ignore, process just the X's. We're going to auto measure the distance. We're going to mark our area. We're going to frame it. And we're going to cut. Now, for the acrylic, I actually do turn the air assist back on to a two, but it's going to depend on what you're using. When we remove that, we do the same thing with the pink. Same exact process, everything else to ignore, just the hearts to process, and same exact everything. Look how beautiful this is. Hold on, look at that. Can we just say, nice? While the acrylic is cutting, we come back to this little grid. We only want to remove what we don't need. So we need the grid, but we don't need all this other stuff, right? We cut our weeding box out to make this super easy. Now, I will tell you, if you've never worked with heat transfer vinyl, go slow. You can stretch it very easily, and we don't want to stretch out that grid. I'm going to spare you. But it's really simple. It's really soft to pull out of, out of here. There's no tugging or anything. So as I mentioned, you can clean up your edges manually, but I'm going to get a paper cutter out because I'm lazy. I'm efficient, not lazy, but that's a whole lot faster for me, so... Again, now I'm over there cutting the pink acrylic. I need to warm up my press. I'm going to go 330, 330 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 seconds for my first press and see how that does. So while that's warming up, I'm just going to set this uh, heat safe pad up over here. I'm going to align my piece. On this one, I didn't use any heat safe tape, but I'm going to tell you I will be using a Teflon sheet in just a second. 
So you see this plastic on top? We're going to use that for this first press. We're going to make sure we're not pressing the seam and we're going to use medium pressure for 15 seconds. It's going to be hot, so please be careful. Do not touch this yet. It's hot. Okay, so once it cools down a little bit, you're going to try and pull it up. If your vinyl lifts, you put that carrier sheet back down and press it for five more seconds. If not, you do like me and pull it up entirely. Go slow. You won't have any problems. That carrier sheet is no moss. We don't need it. Now we need a Teflon sheet or a towel, whatever you have on hand. We're going to press it for about five seconds. And the reason we're doing this is because we just want to lock in those um, that HTV to that uh, burlap, anything that could have lifted up. We're going to let this cool completely. Don't start messing with it. Not only will you burn yourself, but you, you could mess up something. So we're just going to let it cool completely. Once it has cooled completely, it's not. Look at that. So now it's cooled. I'm going to start messing with it. So I do this thing I always have with all of my HTV projects is I pick it up, I bend it, I make sure nothing is lifting. Now I'm going to show you out of the machine, this pink is perfection, but the red needs a little work. So the only thing on the pink is where the start and stop of the laser is. I have a nice little like edge there. I'm just going to one entire swipe of my nail file and it's gone. This is the difference between filed on the bottom and unfiled on the top. I do recommend it for this red. I'm not somebody who's going to sit there and do four passes on something and call it a success. So I'll just tell you the, the settings that I used will produce a little crisp, but you can easily get rid of it. You play a little tic-tac-toe game with yourself. Yay, you win you lucky thing. And then you just load everything into the bag, pull it tight, and now it is ready to be gifted. You can add a little tag or anything else, but that is it for this project. Took me about 25 minutes to set everything up, cut everything, and clean everything. That's this whole entire thing. I hope you liked it. Let me know what you think of it down below, and let me know if you've ever worked with heat transfer vinyl. Also below will be the XCS file. Please like this video, share this video, and subscribe for more crafty fun.